London Pile Isle. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booth Views. I've got one from the Meantime Brewery here, uh, based down there in uh, Greenwich in uh, South London. Uh, they do a variety of stuff, they're quite well known, they've been around, you know, sort of 10 or 15 years, possibly even longer. Um, <clears throat> I've tried their lager, didn't think much of that to be honest, it was a pretty average lager that I thought you know, competing against the other craft lagers and um, even the macro brewed lagers, I didn't think they were going to get far, but you see their stuff in the pubs now and people drink it and I just think, Pff. yeah, I don't get it. But let's have a look at the pale ale. Uh, this was got from uh, Marks and Spencers. It's um, a 330 mil can, it's 4.3% in the volume. Um, the ingredients are water, malt with barley, hops, and that is it. Uh, London Pale Ale. Is it a traditional Pale Ale or is it an American style Pale Ale? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, what I will say about the Meantime Brewery is, um, you know, they've been going a long time and um, there's a lot of pubs and venues as well that, you know, they have live music that serve their beer. It's really expensive. From what I found, London is expensive anyway. But I do remember one of their lagers being on sale in a pub, and it was nearly a five or a pint. And I remember thinking, five pound for a lager is it's taking the piss. And it wasn't even that great either. Anyway, all prejudice aside, I'm going to see what this is like, and if it's good, I'll tell you it's good. And what does it smell of? Not a great deal. I'm really struggling to get to get anything from that at all. Well, hopefully it will prove me wrong, but usually the aroma goes a long way to making a beer taste great. But let's get this in the glass and see what's going on. There it is in the glass. It is slightly cloudy, it has got a one finger head, white fluffy, fluffy head. Oh, that's disappointing, it's not, it's not smelling of much at all. Very faint malt and not a lot else. This is cold by the way, it's come out straight, come straight out of the fridge. Uh, Let's get it down the edge to see what's going on. This is what pale ale used to taste like years ago. And it was very very insipid, I thought. It had slightly more malt than the lager. And a big drink in London back when I was growing up in the sort of late 70s, early 80s and mid 80s was light and lager. That was a typical London drink. Up north you had light and bitter, but in London it was light and lager. And the only reason you get that was because you had a bottle of lager, which was half a pint, and you'd fill out or the barmaid or the bar person would fill out a pint glass of um, lager and you generally get more than a pint so that's why people drank it but this is what the light ale reminds me of that 
is very, very insipid. And it reminds me of what light ale was like back in the day. Uh, you had um, Courage done a light ale, and um, who was the other one? Truman's. Truman's was perhaps the most popular. Truman's used to be an old brewery based in London. They were based in um, uh, near Liverpool Street, Whitechapel, ran that way. But today, um, this stuff, oh, it's very, very bland. There's not a lot of flavour there. I'm struggling with this because I really want to like it. It's a London brewery. I'm from London, and you know I'd really like to promote brewers from London. But this stuff, what are they saying on the side of the can? Let's have a look. Uh, we're pioneers of modern craft beer. They are. I will give them that. They've been around a long time. We're passionate about what we do. And not prepared to compromise that's why we brew quality flavor packed sessionable beers that everyone can enjoy right okay british and american hops unite to make a sessionable pale ale that's packed with citrus flavor no it's not i'm not getting any citrus on that whatsoever this is cold it's come out of the fridge there's vague floral notes on it perfumey floral notes but it doesn't do much for me at all it reminds me of that shipyard stuff um, right there's, there's two ways you can go with this right if they just said we're going back to the 80s we want to brew what Truman's and Courage were doing back then that you would flavour your lagers or your bitters with and market it as that I'd have said yeah this is brilliant 10 out of 10 it reminds me of that they say this is packed with citrus and all that it's not it's not packed with citrus at all saying that it's not bad, it goes down nice, um, it's cold, it's like I could drink that, fine, I could drink pints and pints of that, so maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but um, when they say it's uh, you know, a, a, an IPA, oh, sorry, a pale ale, a London pale ale, yeah, I, get, I do get that. And if they'd have just latched onto the 80s stuff, that would have been a per perfect description. But when they say, no, it's got a big citrus burst and it's like the American stuff, that's what I was expecting. And I'm not getting that. But they should know their roots and they should say, this is what pale ale tasted like in the 80s. And, you know, market it as flavouring your lagers or your bitters to have a traditional old British drink. You know, light and bitter, light and lager. You can't get more British than that. They missed a the trick there, I think. It's not bad, bad drink, all things considered. I would quite happily drink this all day. So that's why I'd give that seven and a half out of 10. And I would recommend it 